So, tell me something terrible. My phone is silenced. My wine is full. I am ready. All right. We can't have a ASMR. You just get to hear me swallowing wine. Mm. Yummy. No? Top-notch podcasting. It is. You ready to jump into it? Yep. All right. We're going to jump into it because it's... Mm. It's late. Yes. Yes. Also, you should state state your name. Uh, hi, I'm Tiffany. Hi, I'm Scott. And you're listening to Tell Me Something Terrible. Yeah, you are. She's not feeling well, but we're doing this anyway. Yep. <laughs> Somebody was stress eating because it's been an emotional week. And I decided I was going to eat Fritos and they're too cross-contaminated for my little baby Sensi body. See, and if you're going to consume gluten, like, just go for it. Yeah. Go for like... I thought it was going to be fine, but the problem is that I ate two full-size bags of Get you a real it. donut. Get you a real real donut. No, a little bit of gluten takes me out this bad. Can you imagine what a whole donut would do to me now? I feel like yeah, it, I know. When I do get exposed to it, I feel like it's worse because it's been so long now. Anyway, but you're medicated... To a certain extent. <laughs> Self-medicated. Yep. So you'll be fine. Yep. And uh, you said it's super sad anyway, so it's not like you're going to be like, tra-la-la-la-la through the whole podcast. <laughs> yeah. So it's best Neither to just... Neither are you, so it's better to get your jokes out now. I don't have any jokes. Oh. I have sleep deprivation. Great. Sore muscles awesome. and wine. This is going to go It's a trifecta. Yeah. No, no. Everybody's like, well, I'm just going to turn this off now. These fuckers ruined it and we're a minute 48 in. Yep. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Ready? Yeah, I'm. I, do you, I'm. I'm literally on the edge of my seat. Okay, so we're mainly because these seats are horribly uncomfortable. Yeah, we're gonna do some history first. Oh well, I'll probably already know it. I'm a historical savant. Yeah, European history. Oh, even better. Yeah. So I took. We what, are both historical and geographical novices. What was here. the class I had to take in high school or in college? I World know history. Pl- no, no. I took. I played Rome Total War a lot. And that literally helped with my class because it was... And they say video games are useless. Right? It was... I don't remember the name of the class, but it was in that same era. But anyway, it helped because I knew who... I knew the alliances and anyway. I took American history, like, also, from I played, its conception to, like, the, eight, the mid-1800s, and I just wanted to scream. And so everything that's happening currently nowadays, I just also if you would play, scream. If you would play more Risk with me, we'd be better at geography. <laughs> and we'd be worse at marriage. Both can be true. <laughs> so, in the 13th century, okay, King Edward the First of England. Did he call himself the first, or was he just the first? He was just the first. Okay, I don't know. King Edward. Okay, mm-hmm. he is in- he the one on all the cigar boxes? Maybe. <laughs> You've ever seen King Edward cigars? No. Oh. Pretty famous. Maybe the 1200s. I don't think. How long have well, cigars been no, Okay. They aren't boxes from the 1300s. Okay. I'm just saying, I think I'm fairly certain I've seen antique cigar boxes. Also, like King, King Edward's Edward. a really common King, King and Edward yeah. combo. So It's like Pope John Paul. So, King Edward the Sorry. First of yes. England. Yes. Sentence one. Invaded Wales. And he, they claimed it as their own. The country. The country. Yes. <laughs> Not the animal. <laughs> no, that was Jonah. <laughs> That's a little Bible humor for for the kids in the back. <laughs> the shy kids hiding their boners in the back. <laughs> oh my God, this escalated. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> so, the ones who didn't get to go to sex head. <laughs> yes, those school. kids. Yes, <laughs> those are the ones. <laughs> Sorry, am I just jabbing it in there? That's okay. Personal? I got a Bible joke in. You got a Bible joke in. It's good. <laughs> we're on even ground now. <laughs> so they use the Bibles to hide the boners in the back? Yes. No, I was like, we're not recording this episode like visually, so I can just let loose. There's no proof of any of this visually. <laughs> it could, yeah, it doesn't actually, who knows? It's, it's not also, actually him. It's also, we're not recording this because you have a heating pad and a blanket on you like a cocoon, so none of it would be usable. Yeah, it would be awful. And anyway. I just slunched over and like, I have two and a half inches worth of oh, bloat. It's our, great. We pretty, we're the same people right now. <laughs> That's just they my, say when you've been married long enough, you become one. Yeah, that's just my normal posture, and I'm overweight. <laughs> <laughs> so, King Edward invades, invades Wales, the country, not the animal. <laughs> Correct. And they claim it as their Where own. was King Edward from? England. Okay. Is Wales still part of England? We're gonna. Get okay. To it. Sorry. Geography, strong suit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, next. England headed north and invaded the Kingdom of Scotland, triggering the First World War, the First War of Scottish Independence. Okay, which is Braveheart. Mm-hmm. Yep, 
Okay. So then there was a second war of Scottish independence. Scotland came on top on both times. So they were like, fuck you and you yep. nasty Brits, get out of here. You love when Scots are on top. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Whoo! Sorry. It's funny because he's a Scot and he's Scottish. Right. <laughs> and like a good dual pun there. Yep. That's it, though. Just dual puns. <laughs> yep. I was. Nope. I didn't touch that. I just let that one fade off. <laughs> So in the meantime, Wales mm-hmm. was officially being taken over in the eyes of the laws about 1530-ish. And then Queen Elizabeth okay. the I. Is that the one that just died? No. <laughs> yeah, that's the second. That, that's a joke because it was 1530-whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, actually, no. <laughs> she was this 490 was, <laughs> years old. Queen Elizabeth who just died is her daughter. Okay, yes. So, <laughs> so, um, it's that dragon's blood. So uh, Queen Elizabeth the I died in 1603 and was succeeded okay. by a man named King James the sixth the one that wrote the bible yes see of, full circle of scotland <laughs> okay so a scotsman was the king of england he was both the king of england and the king of scotland okay so at this point even though the king like, we have listeners across the pond they're gonna be like i wonder if this I'm is i'm making like, this hella condensed no no i get that and i the, i condense like a four page article into f- two paragraphs i'm just wondering if this is just like Cringy. Common, no common oh, like yes. you know like yeah like oh uh, abraham lincoln i would love yes. to listen to an american explain my history to me <laughs> yes yeah. my history that is four times older than their entire country that's fine but also tell me to point at whales on a map and i'm gonna be like it's this island they're it's probably one of these on here yep yeah right there <laughs> <laughs> so um so he is now the king of scotland and the king of england okay so at this point even though James was the king of both Scotland and England. They technically weren't the same country yet. Okay. They, uh, because they had, you know, fought the war. There's lots of tensions. They tried to invade it. They're not the same country now. Yes. Okay. Scotland. Uh-huh. Okay. Just Okay. No, listen. I'm listening. Sorry. They had two separate governing bodies. Uh-huh. So over the next hundred years, England tried and failed several times to fully incorporate Scotland into its ever-growing kingdom because at this point they had colonized the Magellan Straits, hunks of the OG 13 colonies. Um, they were big in Virginia. Well, state. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yep. Uh, I'm aware. Yeah, there's a really important guy who came from that state. I've heard there's a western portion of that state, too. <laughs> and some moths. Mm-hmm. So um, someone had managed to managed to lay claims in California, India, North Africa, the West Indies, um, and then they had formed the infamous East India Company that was also at their disposal. Heard of it? Yep. And then they were going to go over to Bermuda soon. So like the okay. UK is like on a roll; they're conquering the world, getting it. Can't get Scotland. Okay. So over after 101 years, England and Scotland were finally united. Okay. So it took another hundred years. All right. Good for them. And then this is the beginning of a centuries-old toxic... I do feel like we're flying. We're like zoom-zooming through history yeah. here. So this is uh, this is the beginning of a centuries-old toxic relationship. The Scots, because I told you all of that, right? You have mm-hmm. the king of England and Scotland. Yep. And he eventually worked on getting them combined into one country. Okay. That's important because this... Um, because... Oh, shoot. I missed a spot. <sighs> we'll come back to that. Okay. So... Um, the Scots finally conceded the reason why they decided to join the, the England um, is that they needed to have a better maritime presence, okay. which the British had, and also as an attempt to prevent the Catholics. As we all learned in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes, <laughs> in Port Royal. So they also did it as an attempt to prevent the Catholics from reinstituting an absolute monarchy. So instead, they wound up under a Protestant constitutional monarchy. Okay. So they didn't want the Catholics in charge. They wanted the Protestants in charge. Okay. And the Britain is mostly Protestant. Protestant. Yeah. All right. So we're going to circle back to King James in the 1600s. He had a third title. He was also King James the first uh-huh. of Ireland. Okay. Okay. So because back in the 1500s, Ireland became essentially a dependent of England, which also allowed the king, like the king of England to become the king of Ireland, Ireland, but they'd have separate titles, a little bit of stepdaddy vibes. And, <laughs> and so this title continued to get passed down. Is that where the redhead stepchild comes from? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so this title continued to get passed down through the centuries until King George the third. Okay. That's our stepdaddy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so he was the last to hold the title of the King of Ireland because he is the one who united all of it as a whole. He united this. Yes, the, the kingdom. Yes, the United Kingdom. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So he took Ireland and made them their own because you know he was a little butt hurt about us spilling some tea in the harbor. Yeah. Because this happened in 1801. So Ireland finally became part of the UK. I like you said that, like I know when the Boston Tea Party happened. Seventeen seven. The same. Okay. Was it all? I didn't know if it was the exact same year. Now you're questioning everything. Yeah, I am. Um, I, it's but it's earlier than 1801. I can tell <laughs> yes, you that. Yes, I agreed. <laughs> yeah. Chronologically in history. Boston Tea Party. Uh, it was 1775. Wasn't hold it? please. Um. December 16th, 1773. Wow. Anywho, not 1801. We knew that much. Yes. Boom. I guess I immediately trailed. I should have just mumbled. 1770. <laughs> don't you know? Yeah, 17. Yeah, same time. Yeah. Same time frame. So anyway, um, Ireland put up with England's bullshit for over 100 years. Um, mm-hmm. And then in 1919, the Irish fought for its independence. Okay. But all this did was split custody over Ireland. The North stayed with the UK, and the South split and became the sovereign nation of Ireland in 1921, and then joined the Union, the um, the EU in 1973. So, 1973? Yeah. That's 200 years after the Boston Tea Party. Yes, it is. I just, I'm just connecting dots here for you. <laughs> just the red string everywhere. Yeah, on the bicentennial. Is bicentennial, bicentennial. 200? Mm-hmm. Okay. I thought for a second it was like half of a hundred. Oh, like a dode- like decagon It's like or the whatever. bi-weekly podcast thing all over again. Yes. <laughs> Does that twice a week or every two weeks? It's hard to tell. Um. So We are neither of those things. Neither. We used to be. And then you We're more likely busy. to be every two weeks than we are twice a week at this <laughs> Sometimes. point. Sometimes. Yeah. Um, so this left Ireland split with the Free State and then Northern Ireland, which is currently still part of the UK. So we have Ireland still on its own. Okay. And then Ireland still part along with Wales and Scotland and the UK. They're all. And then little baby Ireland off to the side. Okay. Sorry. So, that was a poorly timed yawn on they my were. part. <laughs> so <laughs> after WWII, yep. nationalism in Wales, Scotland, and Ireland increased, which just put an even bigger strain between Ireland and England, resulting in activism, violence, and the creation of a political party vying for independence. So I'm telling you this long ass history. Okay. So that you understand how long the tension. the tension has been building. Do you want to know my only insight into the tension? Blue balls. No. No, this is going to be very random. Okay. There's a TikToker that comes up on my feed all the time. Uh, he plays Tarkov, the game that Jamie plays all the time. And I can't think of his name, and that's going to bother me, but I might by the end of the sentence. And he's from Ireland. Okay. And his favorite thing, because he like he meets interesting people and he'll like have conversations with strangers. Yeah. And his name's Mr. Gibbons. See, I knew I'd remember. Um, but he will ask every American, is Ireland part of the UK? And if he said if they say yes, he shoots them. Or he'll like be mad at them or whatever. The answer is both. Well, <laughs> he as an Irishman also after everything that's been happening, like with Brexit and everything and like yeah. um and all the social unrest and stuff like that, Northern um n- Northern Ireland is, they say, politically closer to gaining full independence and Ireland being completely independent than it has been since, like, the 1500s. Yeah. But anyway. So shit's popping off in Ireland. Shout out Mr. Gibbons, (laughs) who's a random Tarkov. I've never actually watched a single one of his streams. I only see his TikTok stuff, and that's definitely been corrupted by watching Jamie's streams and liking his Tarkov Thanks, content. Jamie. It's all your fault, Big J ten sixty six. Follow him on Twitch. <laughs> Hashtag shameless plug. Yeah, we'll shamelessly plug Jamie. He'd be into it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> As you were. So I told you all of that history. You did. And also now you know the question like the answer to the question, is Ireland part of the UK? Yeah. Both. Okay. <laughs> yes and no. Was that gonna come up later? No. Um so I told you all of that so I can tell you this. Yep. Poor Northern Ireland had been politically fighting for its independence for decades. I've heard that. Centuries, Modern perhaps. day. Oh, yeah. That, too. Yeah. It was a predominantly <laughs> Catholic state, but had been gerrymandered to death. You have not mentioned what year your story is taking place in yet, right? No, not okay, yet. Okay, okay. I'll be patient. I was just making sure I didn't miss it. 1972. I heard 1973 at one point, because mm-hmm. I made the reference, but I didn't know what year your story was taking so place. So, Northern Ireland is part of the UK. Okay. Okay. 
They'd been fighting for decades for their independence. And um, there's a fruit fly on my wine. Get out of oh, here. Oh, no. Go ahead. <laughs> and I thought you were waving at me like I literally yes. didn't say anything. Stop. Stop. The- no, I put a, <laughs> there's a fly on my wine. I put, it's an emergency. I put sticky notes over it. We're fine. <laughs> Adapt, overcome, innovate. So it was a predominantly Catholic state, but had been gerrymandered to death, leaving Protestants the leading class. Oh, did they bring that? So that's a that's a thing we mm-hmm. inherited, gerrymandering? Cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it didn't feel like a super American word, so I figured we learned it somewhere. <laughs> so despite the odds, there were two cities that remained properly represented. Represented? Represented. Represented. Yep. Did. Represented. Represented. If you say it, the more you say it, the worse it sounds. It's like the word fork. Anyway. What? Fork. Say it like a thousand times and tell me how you feel about the word fork. I'm fine with fork. Are you fine with fork? Yeah, I don't like the word skittles. <laughs> <laughs> On a separate note. Why skittles? I, Do we need because, to address, no, no. The, address this childhood trauma It's off the way Mike the too? L goes up. It's a word in which an L goes up, and I like to L's fade. I don't know why. Say it, and you'll notice the L goes up. Say it. Skittle. Ew. (laughs) See? Now you don't like it either. Welcome to my world. Anyway, proceed. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's the skittle. (laughs) It, like, makes you, like, hee-hee-hee. It's kind of like the vibe that that word has. It's the least serious word, I think, in the English language. You cannot say skittle (laughs) in, like, a serious tone. (laughs) Because it is a word that is not meant to be said seriously. <laughs> well, then it's appropriate that it is a rainbow candy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, it, it it challenges every fiber of my being to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that's going to be in your, uh, your stocking is just going to be full of Skittles this year. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I, can't, I won't eat them. <laughs> Lily will. And you can't eat them. Yeah, Lily will. So you're just poisoning our child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Right? Oh, I don't want to do that. Go um. Ahead. So anyway. Yep. Two cities properly represented it. They're going to have good names. Belfast oh, okay. and Londonderry, which is shortened to known like colloquially as just Derry. Derry. Yeah. yeah. The fight between, is it Londonderry or Derry? We watched like one episode of the Derry Girls yeah. once on Netflix. I, it's a, I liked it. I don't know why we didn't keep watching it. Was it was hard to understand, for one. Yeah, the, um, well, a lot of accents. You've accepted the fact that I need to watch subtitles. things with subtitles, so I think we can give it another go. You would, yeah. You'd watch a sing along with subtitles. Anyway, I absolutely would. <laughs> I'd be like, they're in the way of the sing along. <laughs> um, so, residents yes. here. Residences. Residences <laughs> that were represented. <laughs> Correct. Correctly. The Catholics um, here. Okay. We're um, regularly complained about. I still don't know what the topic of this podcast is. Oh, we're going <laughs> to. To it. It's been 20 minutes. We're going to get to <laughs> okay, it. Okay, good. So the residents here regularly complained about discrimination and unfair treatment by the Protestant controlled government and the police force. Okay. So, These are all things I can understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, I didn't mean for it to. I, I heard about this thing in history, recent history, and I was like, oh, I should do that. It's relevant. Um, You know, because the queen just died. And uh, I. Um, oh, is got, this going to be about the queen? No, it's not about the queen. Um, it's well, not about the she queen. was in power, so... Yeah. I was going to say, it's going to be queen adjacent if yeah. it's not. Um, and so... Um, That's crazy. I, I started looking into it, and I was like, oh, this is uncomfortably familiar. Okay, we'll proceed. <laughs> so there was discrimination in houses, in jobs, and segregation along religious lines. Shocking. Yep. So instead of I black mean, and white people, it's, it's just, Catholics and Protestants. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. I think that's all of that's in the Bible. That's the best part. Uh, yeah. So eventually two po- <laughs> eventually two <laughs> political parties came crawling out of the divide, the Catholic Nationalists, which is a dirty word here in this country nowadays. Yeah. And the Protestant Loyalists slash Unionists. Okay. So in order to protect the Catholic minority, defend free- basic freedoms and guarantee that we call uh and guarantee the rights of what we call the basic amendment, like the first amendment. Mm-hmm. Um, and then to bring awareness of discriminatory w- laws and highlight abuse of, po- abuse of power, the IRA was formed. This is the Repu- the Irish Republican army. So they, not my, not, not our retirement plan. No, okay. nope. An army close. Um, so they were like, we're being mistreated. We're going to create this little, this activist group, an activist group or an army. Both. Was it like a militia? Both. Okay. Um, so there, this. I'm like, I offered a third option. You're still at both. 
Yes, because later, mm-hmm. um, the Irish, the IRA, um, it splintered into two fractions. The official IRA, which is the more passive branch, and the provisional IRA, which is the more aggressive. So think MLK v. Malcolm X. Okay. Okay. Tension had really ramped up in the late 60, in the late 1960s. Okay. Car bombing, riots, and retaliation from the Royal Ulster Constabulary. The what? The Royal Ulster Constabulary. The fuck is that? It's the British Popos. Oh, what a <laughs> dumb name. <laughs> just like gerrymandering right um like who's what's your official title whatever the fuck you just said i'm I'm a a cop (laughs) okay why'd you say this is why they say americans are stupid we're not stupid we just don't need we're efficient (laughs) it's a lot of words to say you're a cop sir so so, um so they would i thought you were talking a political position uh -uh, absolutely not it's the police so the you so there was a lot of car bombings, riots, and retaliation. Then in turn from the RUC, and that happened on the reg, resulting in armed conflicts from both sides that usually ended in someone or multiple someone's getting hurt. That's usually how conflicts are. Yeah. Yep. That's I think the definition actually of a conflict is someone or multiple someone's getting hurt. Yes. That might be Webster, <laughs> Miriam. A hundred percent. I don't know who Miriam is or when they got added, but good for them. It was his mistress. Was it? I have no idea. I bet you it was another white dude. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) So eventually the British Parliament passed a law stating that marches and gatherings in the streets were illegal. Was that educational decree number 23? (laughs) Sorry. No, that's number one. That was the first educational decree. Oh, yes, where they can't have more than three people in a group. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) So, um, and then... (laughs) I hope these follow in line with the education. That would make me so happy. (laughs) Yeah, it would. Um... So after, uh, people would still march and gather anyway. So I mean, it was kind of after they formed the DA, the IRA. It makes sense. I mean, it rhymes. she was British. She was born probably in 1973. Probably. I'm going to Google J.K. Rowling's birthday. You keep reading. I'm listening. Okay. So um, the parliament, because people would still gather, parliament then introduced the, quote, internment without a trial. She was born in 65. Anyway. Oh, close. Um, internment without a trial. Yep. I was listening. You were impressed. Okay, I, 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 I am. <laughs> so this was done in an, a, quote, attempt to quell the IRA uprising. So after what became, um, and this happened because, you know, people were still meeting. All of this, the internment thing happened after um, another riot mm-hmm. uh, that became known as the Battle of the Bog Side. So this is where a clash between the Protestant loyalists. The trolls. <laughs> Sorry, bog side. Just makes me think there's we need some sort of good cryptidy type British vibes to it. The Nain Rouge hopped over and was like, Hey, let me help you out, fam, and then hopped back. Yeah. So, um there was a clash between the Protestant loyalists that were putting on a military celebration parade through Catholic nationalist neighborhoods. That seems like you're looking for a fight. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the loyalists were met by nationalists armed with Molotov cocktails. Mazel tov. I, <laughs> Is that what they say? <laughs> Mazel tov cocktails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the little Christmas ornaments. <laughs> Filled with booze. <laughs> and you light them and throw in people's Christmas trees. That sounds like one way of how it's like... Well, how, oh, how, how or you could drop them down it. chimneys. Oh That'd be fun. God, that's, that's the safest idea. place for a Mazel tov cocktail. It really is. Uh, you'd be like threatening, but in like a safe way. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Anyway, so, <laughs> it's going to make um, a horribly inappropriate joke. No, go for it. No, no, you just like safe words. Then it just get anyway, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> escalated in there. <laughs> yeah. So this escalated into a three day rampage that ended in the British soldiers being sent into the neighborhood where they proceeded to burn down 1500 ho- houses to the ground. Oh, OK. Mm-hmm. That's something. Yep. The, so we've talked about burning down teepees before. And such, like, you know, houses are harder to burn down. Yeah. And these aren't, like, mud huts. These are legit houses. Yeah. 15, holy shit. What year was this? Uh, 1968. Holy shit. Yeah. That's, like, some, like... Crimes against humanity kind of bullshit. That's, like, medieval tactics. Yeah. To burn down houses. Well, we already covered a case that that happened, and that happened in the 1920s. Agreed. But still, like, the fact that this is happening... Like yeah. and and the in our parents' lifetime, that's like my like definer of recent quote unquote right. history. Like my dad was 
Lily's age and mm-hmm. could have watched this on the news and yes. been like cognitively aware of it. Yes. Which is weird. Yeah. Um well and and this is also this is also the British Parliament sent in British soldiers into a country that didn't want to be part of the UK. Yeah, they anymore. took out whatever whatever weird ass name you called their cops, and they're like, no, "Are you no, no. the consul the consulberries?" Whatever, and they're like, "No, we're going straight to British soldiers now." Yeah, so the redcoats are here coming. So this is another little blip to the background to this next step. Oh, we're not even there yet. No. Okay. So because of the new, I should have brought snacks. No, I wanted context. No. <laughs> yeah. So because of this new internment bit, Mm -hmm. if you were suspected of being a member of the IRA, you were snatched up and thrown in jail. Inevitably, this led to just regular civilians being arrested and escalated even further with the British Army violently letting themselves uninvited into people's homes to arrest suspected IRA members. So, you know, no knock raids. They're just like, what's up? Throw them in a bag. Terrific. So Good practices. Yep. Um, so this led to an organization called the Northern Ireland Civil Rights Activists, or, or NICRA. Northern Ireland Civil Rights Activists. Okay. Yep. NICRA and IRA organized a march despite it now being illegal, and the march was planned for Sunday, January 30th, 1972. Okay. That seems like it's going to be important. Yep. So the two heads of the IRA factions met together, inspired by Martin Luther King Jr.'s peaceful walk through Selma, mm-hmm. um, the I Have a Dream Walk march. So the two agreed that having a weaponized group of protesters for the march would only increase the chance of violence. Correct. So for the most part, as in like 99.999% They told nobody to bring something, but there's always that one guy. Yeah. Yeah. The protesters were unarmed. Okay. Okay. So 10 to 15,000 people arrived to protest the use. That's a good chunk. uh Uh-huh. They they arrived to protest the use of internment without trial and equal rights. Mm Mm-hmm. So the British government had sent in a military group to reinforce the RUC presence in the area. So these literal soldiers were called the Parachute Regiment. They were known for being, quote, heavy-handed. Oh, that's Mm -hmm. a cute way to put it. Mm -hmm. And they were, quote, more severe than the typical British soldier. So, like, I don't want to use the term extremists, but... (laughs) No, it's within the government. It's within the soldiers can't be extremists. And they, police officers can't be extremists. So they were just... Um, right? They just followed it to the nth degree of the law. The law. They, like, sent in the Navy SEALs, essentially. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the parachute regiment and the RUC... So wait, did they not parachute in? No, they're just called the parachute regiment. Well, that's dumb as shit. <laughs> like, at least make an entrance if you're called the parachute. Do you wear parachute pants? The fuck? Why are you called? They gotta the- hide all their weapons in the parachute. Yeah, pants. they got their trap pants on. They're yeah. like, let's do this. Ouch. Rude. What? <laughs> I didn't have that many pockets in my trap pants, to be honest. Did There's trap like pants have pockets on the inside too? Because I feel like they could. Um, they usually had like your regular typical pockets, and then their back pockets were actually really big. And then yeah. sometimes, most of the time, they'd have an additional set of like pouches that were almost like cargo pants, but they were below the knee. All you bitches just had fucking flaming and had hot Cheetos and Mountain Dews in them anyway. Wow. So I didn't drink Mountain Dews. Monsters. Dew. That's why sorry. I'm not a lesbian. Monsters. Sorry. <laughs> Monsters. Yes. Yes. Um. Also, the lesbian just a family running joke because yeah. every lesbian that we are friends with or family members with. I'll drink Mountain Dew. Yeah, I guess they do. No, they really do. I mean, it's a good pop. <laughs> so Diet um, Mountain Dew. I don't drink regular, uh, No, you would die. Yeah. So the Parachute Regiment and the RUC set up barbed wire and guarded barricades along the route. So they weren't armed, but they were prepared. Just with... wait. I'm clarifying. The protesters weren't armed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so they set up barricades that were topped with barbed wire. Okay. In an attempt to direct the crowd away from the center of Londonderry, which was a more Protestant part of the city. Yes. They didn't want these Catholics mangling. <laughs> creating a bunch of noise. Yes. Being like, give us equal rights, you We bastards. don't want to smell your holy water. <laughs> so, the barricades were fitted with wooden knife rests. Have you ever smelled smelling salts, by the way? No. I was just thinking about it the other day. What? Have you ever? No. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, I saw, I think it was a, I don't know if it was a YouTube short or t- whatever. Anyway, people like smelling it and it's strong enough to wake you up from like a practical coma. Yeah, and I've seen like dudes do it like like in like gym YouTube videos and I was like that seems a bit extreme like before they cuz like 
it like sends your central nervous system in like a frenzy. Uh, and, that doesn't sound healthy, but okay. No, but I think we should get some just for a TikTok or something. What? It should, could I be already fun. have heart residual heart problems from COVID. Do you here sniff this and really get yourself hyped up and see what happens? Don't die. I love you. The side effects are mild. The like dizziness, <laughs> vomiting, diarrhea. Like that's just your normal Tuesday anyway. So why not try some smelling salts for the content? <laughs> I hate you. That was just a good joke. Anyway, so sorry. As I had to. We had. I meant to talk to you about that, like in real life, but I forgot about it until right then, and I was like, <laughs> "Bring it up now, or it's never going to happen." No time like the present, and I have your answer on this. I got your consent. It's no, no, you did not get my consent. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's not pretty what sure you... that was a hefty no when I said, "Yeah, sure, let's okay. do this with my heart problems." Also, my we don't we talk we've talked. I don't chuckle laugh like i'm not like a big i'm not fucking santa claus i don't have like a ho 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 laugh i have like a high pitch like exhale laugh <laughs> and every time it freaks me out because it redlines our audio because it's very it's like i i don't know like everyone's got their fucking laugh i can't change it but every time like it it distracts me because our audio is just blipping along over here and all of a sudden i laugh and i look over and there's this giant red line of my oh god a noise something that proves i exist my weird high pitch exhale yes <laughs> So I'm going to not laugh for the rest of this podcast. Great, because it's going to get really sad. No, no, I meant ever. Oh, that's Like ever. I can make episode. it more sad. We'll just do shots. Then I'll laugh and then I'll fall asleep. <laughs> so the barricade. Yes. It was fitted with wooden knife rests. Wooden. Okay. Like w- the not for wooden knives. For regular knives. I'm they aware. Were I'm not okay. an idiot. Um, just, you know, just clarifying. Is it for like bayonets? Yeah. Um, bar- you just said yeah without even... They don't. They don't use bayonets. Um. So barbed <laughs> wire. I don't know. Are spears. They for, are they for bayonets? Yeah. They don't use bayonets. Then they're not for bayonets. <laughs> then they're clearly for like pocket, like their big side. I hope they're like cleavers. Shit. No, they're cleavers. They're not spears. They're cleavers. It's okay. They're all butchers. So it was fitted with wooden knife. Uh, sorry, wooden cleaver <laughs> rests, barbed wire, and concrete slabs with a handful of British soldiers and two armored personnel carriers. Okay. So they had like tanks essentially like behind them just but just for people and these are the ira has these or no the british soldiers these have are these? the british soldiers these. the ira uh-huh the protesters yes have nothing they're unarmed they are unarmed okay i thought the ira non-walking people like Mm-mm. their other members were the ones doing all these barricades absolutely not okay. this is this is the parachute regimen because they're trying to direct them away from the city proper where they they're know trying they're to, headed they're trying to bottleneck them into a in, essentially like into a different area yes where they have a tactical advantage anyway no they do it by the barricades okay um so <laughs> the plan was to also was to arrest any protesters that wandered out of the group that were not um but um they were not directed to attack anybody they were okay. just gonna snatch and grab it was called <laughs> it was called the uh, scoop up operation the way the baby gazelles get taken out of the pack by a lion yeah okay. or like you know, all those protests in Oregon where people were getting black bagged and pulled into on Well, that bands. too, yes. Mm-hmm. So they did need to respond. Um, if they did need to respond to a violent outbreak, the soldiers were ordered to only use tear gas, rubber bullets, and water cannons. Okay. Yep. But according to a man named Ivan Cooper, who was an organizer associated with the official RIA and a staunch pacifist. So that's the chill mm-hmm. side of the IRA. Yep. He had caught sight of the soldiers down a side street, and they all seemed, quote, hyped up. They were probably doing smelling salts. Probably. (laughs) And they were, um, and those soldiers, um, they were told that the bog side had not seen a British soldier in daylight in six months because of the whole bog side, you know, ideal, ordeal. Mm -hmm. Um, So they were told to anticipate an IRA ambush. Okay. So that's why they were, like, hyped. Okay. So... This protest march started mm-hmm. at 3 p.m. that day. They carried on peacefully for the, and for the most part calmly through Bogside toward the Protestant city center where the barricades were installed. Because of the barricades, the group decided to redirect their route to a part of the town called Free Dairy, which is a predominantly Catholic area that police regularly avoided entering. So they figured they'd be safe there. Okay. So most of the crowd followed, but there were some, quote, youths. That lingered behind by the barriers. So at this point, the quote unquote narratives, as in the eyewitness accounts of what unfolds, 
they start to differ. Vary a little bit. Mm-hmm. So according to the parachute regiment and the URC, the RUC, um, they began to feel threatened because some of these youths that were left behind, they started to throw rocks. These degenerates. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the soldiers felt threatened. And their lives were clearly in danger. Tear gas. Uh, rubber bullets, water cannons, okay. and tear gas. Yes, mm-hmm. as they were instructed. Yep. And then just before 4 p.m., protesters witnessed some of the paratroopers making their way into some abandoned buildings near the barricades. So they began throwing stones and bottles at them. So um, this time, though, when the soldiers opened fire, not so rubber. It was live ammunition. Okay. Mm hmm. So at this point, um, all of the protests that turned violent, protesters were met with like tear gas and beatings from baton brandishing RUC officers. No one had been shot at. Okay. With live ammunition. Until now. Until this one. All right. So this first time that people got shot at, two people were shot. One was a 15-year-old boy. He did survive. And then the other was a passerby who died of his injuries later. The soldier who shot them claimed the pair were throwing nail bombs. Okay. Yep. I'm not familiar with nail bombs. Like, I mean like shrapnel? Yeah, like okay. little bombs with nails and stuff. Like IU, like so they IUD. explode and uh, shoot not nails. IUDs. IEDs. IUDs, yes. 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 I, like IUDs. Yeah, they all, he they ran over and shoved copper up my vagina. <laughs> not all of them are copper, but yes. <laughs> um, so like a little handheld I, I, you. IEDs. <laughs> not IEDs. Well, you know, sometimes it can feel like there's a bomb in your vagina. Yeah, nail bomb. Not in a good way. Um, so, uh, so they shot at them in return and the order came at 355 requesting a subunit be deployed to barricade 14 which is where all this was happening to quote pick up the yabos on the street which is like a slang term for the youth um so the plan was to enact the scoop up operation there were more and then there were more warning shots that were fired in an attempt to disperse the hostile crowd and that's when the soldiers quote said they came under fire while okay. they attempted to arrest the protesters. And this is where things really escalate, you know, because mm-hmm. those soldiers that were armed with tear gas and bulletproof armor and like rifles were getting rocks thrown at them. Yeah, they were yeah. clearly in an unsafe situation. Yes. So um, there were also news cameras and reporters there broad- broadcasting the quote riot from England? Yeah. Okay. Um, so they captured the moment that a priest named Father Daly was attempting to tend to the fatal wounds of a 17-year-old boy and trying to get this dying child some safe to safety and some medical attention, waving a blood-stained handkerchief at the soldiers. Yeah? Yep. So they caught that footage. It was aired and broadcast. Oh, good. Yep. So it didn't matter. The soldiers started chasing down protesters as they ran, firing into groups of people, sometimes from their armored vehicles. You need that against unarmed mm-hmm. civilians. They were being shot at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, and they had bombs. So at one broken down barricade, the soldiers encountered a group of what they claimed were gunmen with nail bombs, and they opened fire on them. Seven of them died. Two were shot in the face while trying to rush to the aid of one of their fellow protesters who had been shot. One protester that managed to survive was a father who was trying to help his son who had also been shot. Um, A later inquiry reported that this father was just shot by a rogue bullet from a fellow civilian that was firing haphazardly in his direction. Of course. Mm -hmm. So this report Mm -hmm. would later be known as the Widgery Report. Widgery do? (laughs) Um, Sorry, this... (laughs) The... the uh, moments to lighten this up are few and far between. So apo- uh, my apologies. <laughs> no disrespect to this family, but I just needed... No, the, no, the, the Widgery Report is... I know, the, but I'm saying it's yeah. still about like... Oh, yeah, somebody You had just son. talked about a kid getting shot in the face. But yeah. yeah. Um. So the Widgery Report, they uh, concluded that the soldiers did no wrong that day, that, quote, <laughs> those accustomed to listening to witnesses could not fail to be impressed by the demeanor of the soldiers and that they quote gave their evidence with confidence and without hesitations yeah because they've been programmed to do such wow what it's like a coordinated story (laughs) probably drummed up anyway nope yeah they were told you just keep reading them fine (laughs) so um they and they quote withstood cross-examination without contradicting themselves okay and therefore, it was concluded that the soldiers were the ones telling the truth, quote, as they remembered it. 
in a situation where they held all the power and were not running frantically for their lives, yeah, they probably were able to keep their story straight. Um, what are you talking about? They had nail bombs. Nail bombs. How many um, British soldiers died to a nail bomb? Do you have those numbers for me? So a few blocks away, there was a man <laughs> laying injured. I do. Just wait. So a few blocks away. It's had wicked deja vu, by the way. Um, that's because I say this a lot. <laughs> that's true. So a few blocks away, there was a man lying injured calling for help while like other people were getting mm-hmm. shot at. So when a fellow protester rushed to his aid waving a white handkerchief. I believe that means like surrender. Uh, yeah. I mean, from what little I know about history. Mm-hmm. So he was also shot in the head and killed. Okay. Yep. So two protesters were shot in the back as they tried to crawl away to safety, and they died on the spot from their injuries. And after 18 minutes, the firing finally stopped. That's a long time. Mm-hmm. So the injured were still trying to get any sort of medical attention. A 17-year-old named Gerald Donahue had been shot in the stomach after the shooting, and he was seeking medical help. He was brought to a nearby doctor's house, like a civilian doctor, mm-hmm. where he was treated and then put in a car and driven to a nearby hospital. But, but on the way, the car was stopped by a British soldier at a military checkpoint. Of course. Mm-hmm. The driver was arrested, and Gerald was taken by a, a different soldier who then brought him to an army first aid post. Where he was pronounced dead. dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the soldiers claimed that when they searched his dead body, they found four nail bombs on his person. Of course they did. Mm-hmm. In later testimony, in a second inquiry of the events that unfolded on what became known as Bloody Sunday, the civilians that found him and searched him, the soldier that drove him to the medical outpost and the medical officer who treated him all testified that they did not see any bombs on him. Okay. So it was concluded in the second report that he may have d- had dropped the bombs and that he may have dropped them before he got a chance to throw them, but there was no actual evidence that he had them in the first place. In fact, in that second inquiry, which became call- uh, known as the Seville Inquiry, which was done 30 years later. Seville or civil? Si- Seville, like S-A-V-I-L-L-E. Okay. Seville Inquiry. This was done 30 years later. It took much longer mm-hmm. um, and was way more involved took more time to complete. According to the Seville Inquiry, there was no evidence of anyone having any nail bombs. It's weird. I was kind of drawing that conclusion. I figured if anybody did, it was the soldiers at this point. No, they just had guns. They had high-powered rifles. Well, I mean, but it would have been easy to be like, they have nail bombs. Shink is they throw one off to the side. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like, planted evidence. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Hey, kept them in their parachute pants. Yes. So once the riot was over, there were 26 unarmed civilians injured and 13 dead civilians. An additional death took place four months later from complications, leaving the total death toll at 14. Mm -hmm. And of course, not a single British soldier was even injured. Well, that's surprising for how many rocks were being thrown at them. (laughs) Not even one Band-Aid was administered. (laughs) Nope. Huh. Light day for the the... Medics. Yeah. Um, so three days later, the IRA retaliated by setting the English embassy, embassy ablaze in Northern Ireland. Get it. Yep. I'm not even mad about it. Uh-huh. So in April of... I'm, 19- not, a, I'm not usually like a fire everybody kind of guy. It, Sometimes the, but the anarchist building? comes out. Fire the building. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in April of 1972, so this is... Math. Three months later? Okay. Four months later? Queen Elizabeth II, mm-hmm. on her 426th birthday, <laughs> <laughs> and the British government exonerated the British troops from any illegal actions during the London Dairy protest and increased the military presence in Ireland. I'm surprised they even needed to be exonerated. I figured they were holding a parade for how brave they were at this point. <laughs> yeah, those rocks. <laughs> Sorry. So in July, the IRA... You've made me salt. This podcast <laughs> has made me just more jaded. I like when there's a Come person... Come to the dark side. I like when there's a person I can hate. I don't ha- I don't like hating countries. Especially when... The country's fine. It's the government that's a problem. Especially when my heritage on one side of my family <laughs> is British <laughs> and the other side is 
you know, half Scottish. Yeah. It's just a tough crossroads I'm approached with. And then there's like all the German and all that too. Try having that native blood. Well, yeah. Allegedly. Uh, yeah. I've been told that my great grandpa, like my great great grandpa, mm-hmm. definitely, like my mom's like, yeah, no, I saw pictures. Yeah. Um, I've never seen them, but mm-hmm. anyway. I hope your original last name was Tingly Bull. <laughs> no. That's why I like Red Bulls. Yeah. Um, God, that was Her maiden name's Tingly. Horrible. Um, so if you didn't know, now you know, and it's okay if you smiled. We all laughed. <laughs> There's not a lot of the worst last names than that. Than Tingly? Yeah. No. I can think of a couple, but I work at a place where I see like 400 names a day. I can think of some bad ones too. Yeah. <laughs> so in July, the IRA set 20 bombs off in Belfast, killing several per- military personnel in response to the increased um, presence. Military presence. Mm-hmm. And so. Um, the British, they tightened their reins in the court systems um, even further um, by also having trials without juries for terrorist suspects with an over 90% conviction rate. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> trials without juries have a pretty high success rate by their measure. Yeah. Weird. Mm-hmm. That's fucking weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have those here, too. So, this back and forth violence increased throughout the 1990s, ultimately leaving over 3,600 people dead in the skirmishes, both civilians and soldiers. And I think there was over 30,000 people injured before the British government finally reached the Belfast Agreement, which set up the Irish Embassy and finally granted Catholics equal representation in 1998. Hey, we were alive. Uh huh. That's was, like kindergarten. I was 10. Yeah. I was 10. Just kidding. That's like. Fifth grade, grade homie. I'm a year younger than you. I know, but I'm just saying. (laughs) Let's just say elementary. Yep. So in... I didn't want to say elementary, and you say, see, that's why the Brits think we're stupid. (laughs) There's other reasons why they think we're stupid. (laughs) I can think, besides using the word cop. We've made our own mistakes. Let's be... (laughs) Still are. And we really don't want to learn from anybody else's mistakes. Fuck. Or our own. (laughs) Stubborn. So in... 2010, the Seville Report, mm-hmm. which is the second inquiry, was completed after seven years um, of research and with over 900 people interviewed and nearly two million pounds invested. It painted a very different Pound. okay money money mm-hmm. yes monies. Um, it painted a very different story than the uh, which wig- I definitely fucking put Wiggly Report. <laughs> <laughs> What was it? It was Widgery the, Report. Widgery. So they they came to a different, a very different uh, conclusion than the Wiggly Report. Was there eight thousand nail bombs? <laughs> no. Every protester had a nail bomb <laughs> strapped to their chest. Four nail bombs mm-hmm. strapped to their chest. Yes. So um, so they concluded that directly um oh the. Wiggly report. It was concluded. Widgery. Direct, the Widgery report was concluded. It was concluded directly after the protest, and it was overseen by some fancy pants lord, which concluded, you know, the soldiers weren't at fault. That was the minister of magic. Yeah. Um, so they, he, but he did conclude <laughs> that the soldiers were not at fault, albeit the shooting was quote bordering on the reckless. Okay. Yep. So surprisingly, is that a weird admittance of fault? Um, bordering on the reckless? No, because they weren't at fault. Yeah. They were just being a little overzealous. Mm-hmm. They're all hopped up on Mountain Dew. Yes. And uh, and so, strangely, there were people that argued that the report had clearly been, like, whitewashed um, in an attempt to defend the soldiers. Mm-hmm. So. It yeah. wasn't a jury that came up with that. No. We don't do juries in these trials. <laughs> no, we don't. Um, very much like the witch trials. So... Um, from the Seville report, evidence was found that the soldiers had knowingly given false accounts in order to justify o- their open firing, and the soldiers had lost control, ignored orders, and that training had um, and their, had ignored their training and failed to satisfactorily identify targets posing a threat, and um, they created an overall serious and widespread loss of fire discipline among the soldiers. Shoot first, ask later. Yep. Okay. So it was found that the soldiers never should have entered Bogside in the first place, which is where the crowd had turned into. Which is just a great name for a town. It really, it was the section of the town, but yeah. Yeah, still. Yeah, here we have like Upper Essex and Lower Essex and Queens. We have like, I don't actually know the rest of Jackson's suburbs. You know there's five divisions of Jackson? No. Now you know. I, I know the heights. 
So there's the Heights. So there's Essex the, Heights. Yeah, Essex Heights, because there's Upper and Lower Essex, Queens, and then two more that I don't know the names of. Great. You don't give a shit. Under the Oaks. <laughs> it might literally be called the Oaks. Anyway. Um. So no one gives that shit about that close of a hyper history. So they never should have entered Bogside. Five soldiers shot at civilians who they knew did not possess a threat. And then two soldiers shot at civilians they claimed to be gunmen without just causation. And the soldiers had first fired after hearing the warning shots that were fired from their own lieutenant once they had entered Bogside. Classic. Mm -hmm. So they were responding to friendly fire. The only thing that could have been more... Like by the book is the old car backfiring. Mm, yeah. Yeah. No, instead it was. Um, yeah. yeah. Said it was the lieutenant shot heard round the bog. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so in 2019, a soldier, um, he was named Soldier F for an anonymity's sake. <clears throat> he was charged with murder. And then in 2021, the charges were dropped because of the public prosecution service. Um. Because they had found the evidence presented by two other soldiers that had also killed civilians, Soldier A and Soldier C, um, it was inadmissible by it was inadmissible because um, of how the evidence was obtained. So, okay, you know, God save the queen and all. Yep, Soldier C. Mm-hmm. And that's um, Bloody Sunday and the aftermath, and how every single one of those is um, that where Sunday Bloody Sunday comes from? Sunday Bloody Sunday, maybe. I don't know. Google don't it. Know. No. Um, so yeah, that's why the Irish are really not that upset about the queen dying. And we really shouldn't be that upset either. Because this is all of her. Yeah. Oh, this is one of like yeah. dozens of atrocities. Mm-hmm. This was the one that was the least conspiratorial when I was going through. There's another one where they were like, yeah, the queen went on a picnic with 10 kids and they never came back. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> this one seemed much more provable. Um, the other stuff that I saw, I was like, oh, I mean, I believe it, but, you know, people also thought Pizzagate was real. And so was Key went on. Um, she, uh, yeah, secretly is a Jedi. Yes. The Yinglings had to go. <laughs> the Yinglings. Sorry. That, that's, one, <laughs> that's one of my favorite memes. There's a bunch of beers. Anakin crushing. <laughs> yeah. Anakin, the Yinglings. <laughs> so sources. Okay. NPR an NPR article Northern Ireland marks 50 years since the Bloody Sunday killings. Mm-hmm. Irishcentral.com article what actually happened on Bloody Sunday in Northern Ireland. A BBC article Bloody Sunday what happened on Sunday 30th January ni- uh, 1972 because they say their date's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard not to just say yeah, it yeah. in a different order. Just start with the year if you're going to go completely ass backwards. <laughs> So, and then also history.com entries how Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland became a part of the UK. This day in history, January 30th, 1972, because you could tell it was written by an American. Um, and also entries Bloody Sunday and the 30 years of Secretary and Violence, Irish Republican Army timeline. Wow. All, all the things. You know, this one Did was. Did you learn a lot? This one, while being terrible, was very. Relevant. I feel smarter. Oh, good. I've had a lot of wine, I so I don't know how much I retained, but <laughs> I'll listen back. Got to bump those numbers I'm up. I'm glad I didn't slaughter the storytelling too badly. No, no. It was good. Um, there was a lot of dates at the beginning. Yes. Which I'm glad but, I didn't try to remember them. Yes. It, the dates weren't important. It was the information. But, yes. Well, because it, it's really hard, like, what, right when you have, like, discussion. And well, almost, the, I would say probably half the people I talk to are like, is Ireland part of it? Like, when did Ireland become part of it? And you're like, well, technically, it's yes and no. Well, and I feel like because I do have Scottish heritage, I should probably know more about the timeline of events of between like Scotland, Ireland. Like I should, I should be somewhat familiar. Like people are like, you know, have heritage is like American heritage, all that stuff, and like their family came from this state or that. My family's been in the Midwest, and before that, they were over there. So I feel like I should probably, you know, am I? grandma did all the research i just got to read it she literally wrote a book about our family heritage yeah and i have a t- i have a ton so like i'm like i'm irish and scottish and british and dutch and indigenous and yeah and but mine's much more all different concise. Sorts of stuff. yeah yours is like these two countries <laughs> like we have addresses essentially like i could go back and like go to like houses of my ancestors which is cool 
Yeah. And you have your plaid and your... Mm-hmm. Anyway. All different sorts of stuff. So, no, that was... And I'm over here like, I think it's this tribe. I have no idea. <laughs> and then your Napoleon leaked out. Anywho, <laughs> thanks for listening. Yes. And if you've made it this far... Congrats. We made it this far. And it has slowly... You've lost the heating pad, the no, blanket. No, I have the heating pad still. It is so hot up here. I don't know how the fuck you have a heating pad on you. I cannot wait I for I would fall. make the joke that I'm part lizard person, and then I found out today that it's actually super anti-Semitic, so we shouldn't make that joke anymore. Oh, that's yeah. fun. Because that's like how people got people to like, way back in like the 30s and stuff like that, they were like, Jewish people are lizard people, and it's part of this big contrarian. Is that where it started from? Yeah, that's where it started from. I assumed so. it was some sort of like alien offspring. Uh, yeah. Uh huh, and it just got twisted into yeah. Um, the I watch- Jews, and so it's bad to. It's uh, so I'm. Have How to much try do you know to- about Apollo thirteen? Apollo thirteen? Yeah, a lot. I fucking love Apollo thirteen. Oh damn it! Okay, glad I asked. <laughs> I thought about doing the bonus spot on Apollo thirteen. Apollo thirteen, the movie, used to be one of my comfort movies. So, um, this is completely. Pretty sure I watched it every day. For this one is summer. this is. If you stayed here, you're like. You're invested, so you don't give a shit about anything else. Your life is as anyway. <laughs> Your life is great. It's Seek great. help. Seek help. <laughs> no, this no. is this is TMST behind the scenes. So I watched. Um, I'm all caught up on Expedition Unknown, the mm-hmm. greatest show ever. Mm-hmm. If you have Discovery Plus, just just watch it. Josh Gates is an American treasure. Anyway, he is his man crush. I'm pretty sure is no. is Josh Gates your pass if you ever met him. <laughs> he no. He is he is. I just want to get a beer with him. And just talk about places he's been. Anyway, he's a member of the Explorers Club now. Okay. Which is like national. Wait, I've heard of this. The Explorers Club has everybody in. Yes. Everybody who's ever discovered anything. I think I've heard about it because he has mentioned it on the show. Yes. So he now has a show, separate show, called Tales from the Explorers Club, where he like interviews. Have you ever seen Massanino, the astronaut? He's been all, anyway, he's a pretty famous dude. Okay. Um, and there's like all these guys that have been like, down is like Mount first people to Mount Everest were in or Explorers Club. Yes. People that have been to the deepest part of the ocean, Explorers Club, like all this shit. But he So did, is James Cameron um in Explorers Club? I don't know. But he was not the first person down there. The first okay. people he went fifty years after the first people reached the bottom of there. Was he the first person since those people? Yes. Because he was he a was big the, deal. Yes. And then uh someone else went after him and went sixty feet deeper. Bastard. Well, no, because he wasn't like a film director. Anyway, the first people went were fifty years beforehand. That's insane. And the way they went was in the way they went was insane because they literally had a fucking blimp on top of them, like full that they flooded with water and it pulled them down, and then they let out all these iron beads so they would go back up. Anyway, it's crazy. That's not the point of what I was talking about. What about about. the pressure? They were in a steel container that was five inches thick. Anyway. What about maintaining the pressure inside of it? Well, yeah, there's a whole, there's all the science behind it and everything. And they were the first people to discover life down there and realize that anywhere there's water, there's life. Anywhere in the world, anywhere in the, like, that they've ever found water, there's been life. Anyway. Okay, I'm just saying it makes my nose and my teeth hurt when you talk about these things. Anyway. I wanted to be a Even if Everest, (laughs) if Everest was put in the crater, that, like, crevice. There'd be 7,000 mm, feet above yeah, it. Yeah, I know. It's so crazy. The oceans are scary. Anyway, I don't remember what I started talking about. <laughs> Apollo 13. Oh, Apollo 13. And yeah. your man crushed on so Josh So anyway, Gates. I was going to do the bonus episode on Apollo 13 because he like went into like in depth because yeah. one of the three people that were in the like the Odyssey uh-huh. that then and then he was an Explorers Club member and he took a flag with him that he was going to put on the moon when they landed. Aww. But they never got to land because they had the issues and they had to slingshot and all that stuff. No, no, no. The Explorers Club flag in its plastic bag is now hanging up in the Explorers Club in New York City. Oh, that's really cool. But it's supposed to be on the moon. Well, he never opened it. So it's literally still in the sealed, like, bag that he took to space, was up there the whole time. So it has space air in it. Anyway. But well, not space air, but like air even, that was in well, space. Inside that Explorers Club building, they got the sled from the first guy that went to like the North Pole. Like the actual sled he took and came back Where with. Where is this? Can we it's go in, to it? No. It's an exclusive members only building. God damn it. But that's why he gets to have this show because he's a member so he can Feels go, like there's some Illuminati shit hiding He can go in, in the ar- Oh, for sure. <laughs> Because he can go in like the archives and like find like the like, God. they're like the instruments people use because people like just give it to like, anyway. 
We'll watch it. You'll enjoy it. Yeah, I will. Let's go. I'm going to go take another edible and we're going to go watch it. Uh, it's, well, maybe. We'll see. It's late. <laughs> but we can start watching it at night. Anyway, we, we'll have to give up guys grocery games for a couple weeks. You okay, okay with it? Okay, good. <laughs> I can, I can right. do that. It has been Way a lot long. of rambling. If you stayed till this long, congrats. Uh, yeah, yep. If you made it this far. You are a true fan. Otherwise, we'll be back next week with a more concise story, maybe. Yes. We're allotted like an immense amount of hours a month in podcasting that we never touch. So here's to rambles. <laughs> yep. Anyway, thanks for listening. Yes. We'll be back next week. Yes. And maybe you won't be in dire need of in like pain. I hope not. We'll see. Maybe you will be. We'll see. Rude. You never know with you. You're <laughs> yeah, a mess. You never know. <laughs> You're a mess, <laughs> lady. All right. I looked at a slice of bread. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Oof, that was terrible. Thanks for listening to our terrible podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or wherever you like to listen. Feel free to follow us on Twitter at TMSTPod. And if you'd like to support the show, you can find us on Patreon at Tell Me Something Terrible.